Hey, Tommy here, and this video is on what to expect when you're expecting a reef aquarium. Make sure you stay to the end. We have some really cool footage of a Rosiette Spoonbill. So a lot of people look at these images on Instagram and social media and some influencer videos on YouTube, and they think that their tank should look like that right away. That's probably the biggest misconception that people have about reef aquariums is thinking that the aquarium should look beautiful the entire time and that if it doesn't, you're doing something wrong as a hobbyist. Your husbandry is the problem. And in reality, you should expect your aquarium to go through ups and downs, algae blooms, certain swings in the beginning um, up to about the year to two year mark. So when you first set up an aquarium, it's going to look perfectly clean, white sand, no algae on the rocks. And you can see in this aquarium that we're starting to get just a little bit of brown dusting on the sand. That brown dusting is either a diatom or a dinoflagellate. It's pretty common for newer aquariums that aren't going to have stable and slightly elevated nitrates. Pretty soon after, you should expect this brown algae to start covering the sand more, getting on the rocks. Your glass will probably be getting dirty every day, every other day. And as the tank gets a little bit dirtier, this algae tends to go away on its own. You shouldn't be rushing and adding cleanup crew or doing massive water changes and a ton of maintenance when this is happening. You should just let it ride. Doing all of the, the water changes and adding cleanup crew and things like that can actually make this phase last longer. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but the reason for this is that alongside this algae that you see, there's also competing for that same space a whole other host of microbial organisms and little microcrustaceans and things like that. In a healthy aquarium, these animals and microbes are gonna occupy the space that that algae is currently occupying. So if you just give them time to work things out, they will eventually take over and that problem algae will be excluded from the environment. Typically, you're done with the brown algaes within the first two to three months. After that, you might get some hair algae that's totally normal in the first, you know, say up to six months. You might get cyanobacteria too, that's also really common. Usually these algaes will go away on their own during the initial cycling phase. Sometimes you have to intervene, but generally it's recommended to just leave them be for as long as you can before trying to remediate them with some kind of treatment or excessive amounts of cleanup crew, because chances are it's just a part of your aquarium's normal cycle. When your tank is between six months and a year old, you should expect it to look reasonably well most of the time. Some of your corals will start to take off in growth. Other corals will, you know, just kind of be lingering. Um, your nitrates and phosphates are probably going to be fluctuating quite a bit, but you'll notice if you're keeping track of them, they're trending towards being much more stable. Hopefully you have your calcium and alkalinity dialed in by now, because if you can get those dialed in, nitrate, phosphate, calcium, alkalinity, salinity, temperature, by the time you hit the year mark, that's when things usually start to really take off. And so then you're gonna to start to get really impressive growth. And now your maintenance is going to move away from major water changes, and you're gonna start moving towards pruning and uh, dosing and things like that. Um, dosing nitrate and phosphate is something that people typically have to do when their corals start growing really, really quickly. It can be really difficult to keep a high enough bio load and enough fish in a reef tank when it's really taken off to keep your nutrients in balance. Calcium and alkalinity, eventually you're probably gonna end up having to get a doser and you'll probably end up pruning your corals just to make your dosing life easier, let alone the fact that they'll start taking over. And yeah, that's about it. Once you hit the two year mark, your tank should be fairly stable. At this point, it's considered matured and you shouldn't have any big hiccups anymore. It should be about the same for the rest of the time period that you decide to keep it. Thanks for watching this video, and as promised, here's a Rosiette Spoonbill. And here is the Rosiette Spoonbill. So I'm doing a voiceover. There was a lot of car noises in the background. This was actually just on the side of the road by a canal in South Florida. You can see where they get their name from. They have that very interesting spoon-shaped bill. That's evolved to help them grab little microcrustaceans out of the muck in uh, shallow freshwater ecosystems. And it's those microcrustaceans that give them their coloration in the same way that flamingos are pink because of what they eat. 
You can see it actively foraging here, swiping its bill from side to side. Really cool bird. This is a bonus clip, and I'm excited to share this one with you. This is a Florida scrub jay. Florida scrub jays are pretty endangered um, because of habitat loss. Where they live is really remote. Not a lot of people go there. And because of that, they have basically no fear of people. I was mere feet away from this one, and it continued foraging in the brush as if I wasn't even there. Really, really cool. Thanks for watching. Take care.